Hello everyone, so I was scrolling through YouTube today and uh, I found that Der Bauer posted a video about MSI's AIO coolers getting recalled and I guess Greg Salazar did a whole video on it. Um, I had posted something on Twitter, I'll put it up there, uh, in October of last year. Uh, posting the pictures and what my problems were uh, I have a MSI 360R it was overheating um, I took it apart found the white stuff that he found and Greg Salazar and um, I cleaned it all out and decided to put uh, uh, my own mixture in it was uh, automotive coolant uh, very light coolant just for lubrication a uh, very uh, small amount and uh, uh, distilled water um, I wanted to see if that would work it's lasted this long but it's doing some funny stuff so um, I don't think I'm able to uh, get warranty for this now but uh, it was uh, worth the chance to see what would happen uh, with the antifreeze and the distilled water so this is just a talking head before the video um, uh, I'm going to be taking my computer apart uh, taking the AIO, AIO out and um, disassembling it and see what I find uh, it seems to be still working but there's some issues with heat it's starting to get hotter and hotter so I don't know if it's the materials that they used or what is the actual problem I just know that there's a recall on them or um, I think it's a recall that they said um, there you can check out their serial number see if you're able to get a recall on this uh, I'm an electronic service technician I'm gonna take it apart try to fix it that's what I do um, and just see and see what happens to stuff um, uh, that's this whole purpose of uh, what I do and uh, trying to just repair stuff that normally isn't repairable um, and we'll go from there so thanks for watching and continue um, the video on to where I disassemble and put back together maybe <laughs> I haven't done that part yet so uh, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna find out uh, if you like this video subscribe and like please and uh, we'll see you forward on to the videos here welcome to the next part of the video uh, sorry about the webcam resolution is pretty crappy I was looking back at it but um, here's where I'm gonna take a look at some temps and then shut down my computer take it off and we'll take out the AIO and we'll see what's going on so right now temps are pretty low but if I do any kind of a Cinebench run do the multi-core minimum test duration is off uh, see right up to 85 <laughs> 85.5 like instantly it's at 81 on the the TCT and the T die is 81 82 now and I don't get a very good score so uh, I have another PC that uh, gets way, way better score than this. Uh, it usually goes around 10, 8 to 10, maybe 11 on here. I think I got up to 13, but I had everything off. Um, but it, it varies so much, and right now we're at 83, which isn't too bad, but still, I when I first did this I didn't get over 70 so that was 70 degrees okay 14072 oh, it's not too bad but uh, I would like it a little cooler 
So we'll shut this down. And we will take a look and see what's going on. Now I do need this computer, so I do have another AIO. It's a Game Max L60. I don't know anything about these ones. It's from Deep Cool. See if this works. Um, see if I get any difference. Maybe I'll uh, put that into the video also. I'll put this up here after leave this on here for now so that's the that's my PC took the covers off and everything to get better circulation that's what the covers off the front cover and the top off and low off the ground I'm still getting pretty good uh, temps there, so let's see what we can find. I'll switch the cameras around so that you can see and we'll start working on this right now Okay, so I'm gonna bring the computer over now it's a Big sucker I'll set her down. Disassemble the front cover here. Shut that somewhere safe. Okay, it is a little dirty. I'll just give this a quick vacuum out. Excuse the noise. Sorry about that. Okay. Now, let's see what we got going on here. Got a cable on here, a little twist tie to keep the, the hoses up. Felt that was nicer to have them up and out of the way so we will flip this around should be able to see just like that so I'll take out all these screws of course I put every last screw in this at least they're not too bad okay there's that well, the fans are a part of that too. Give me a moment. I'm going to clean this out a little bit more. I don't want the dust getting underneath the CPU and stuff. So. Uh, 
handiest little thing is the volt vacuum. You can set it to suck or blow, so that that's quite cool. You can blow your PC out. I usually do it outside, of course, but um, yeah, it's just so handy. So now we got this. Have to see where I routed all my wires. They're probably in there. Same with this one. So we'll just flip this up. Take off this back cover. Let's get these screws out of the way. Forget they're somewhere else. Up these ones too. And the back panel. Okay, so let's undo a few things here just so that we have access to it all and it's not tight. Okay, we got this guy. As you can see, the pump is up on the top here. So now we got all that. We will lay this down again. See, I'll put the back cover on. Just hold everything in place. It's actually pretty dirty. I'm surprised how dirty it is. I clean it regularly, but I guess it's been a while. Okay, we'll get these two screws put on here just so it doesn't fall apart. Flip this. Okay. Well, there's that. Crazy. Now, the actual water block will take off. Not a very good fan of these, not a fan of these ones from AMD, only two spots, not, not very uh, efficient, looks like had lots of thermal paste on, 
It's added good coverage. Yeah, good coverage. Okay. There's that. Set this to the side. You know. And I will move this out of the way. Wait. What we're interested in today is this. So we got thermal paste on here, which we'll wipe off. The pigeon crap. and liquidy. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, there's that. Take the screwdriver out first. This thing is very handy, very handy. Uh, let's see, is it a six? Looks like it's a six. Okay, I'll start taking this apart here. There's still, still some thermal paste on the side. I don't want that interfering with the other stuff. I've got a Q-tip. Okay, let's take this sucker apart. Get a little pad out from over here. Quite a few screws in this. Yeah, I shouldn't see the temperatures shoot up like that um, from 37 to 80. 82.5 in the matter of a few seconds that was pretty ridiculous so hopefully it's something easy um, it could be the liquid that I put in here it could be the motor um, I believe the original problem with this is the motor wasn't working properly so I disassembled it and found that one of the wires wasn't on properly so I had to resolder that guy. So here we are. So we'll, we will zoom in a little bit. So we can see if... What I did with that are good. I got my little tool here. Okay. okay. Still with the weight stuff. You can see that. That's pretty bad. So that was actually clogging the port. So I believe this is the in and these are the outs. 
So whatever materials that they are using in this did not help anything. Yeah, and there's my, my liquid. So it actually clogged the, um, the holes, the fins. I don't see it ex as extreme in here, but this would definitely, of course I had to drop it, so, but this stuff right here, right here, probably was in, on here. When I took it off, it wouldn't be at the side of the block for sure. So the in is, <laughs> there's some more right here too. So, this little guy, nothing much on it. It feels greasy because of the um, antifreeze I put in it. Seems like it's doing okay. If I clean that out, it'd probably be fine for another year, but that's not the point. The point is to make something that's n you're not going to have... Um, Uh, break down not even a year I think um, I had that this cooler hooked in for not even a year and it started up I think it was like three or four months and it uh, started overheating so it wasn't that long and it was just well it was more than this So I'll have to clean that out very well. Uh, well let's see the liquid. I'll drain some of the liquid out. Move my tools. The bracket. My screwdrivers. It's still coming out. Put the paper towel there because it looks like it's going to start overflowing my mat. Yeah, this was for, it was ATV um, coolant from a quad that I had. I don't know if there's a difference between automotive, um, like cars and truck antifreeze. I know there is uh, different vehicles. You got the uh, orange stuff and uh, the green stuff and I believe they're different okay let's just wipe all that guck out of there okay let's see if there's any more liquid in here to the side take it out I think that's all we're gonna see there. So that's why it was heating up because it couldn't push enough water through. It was, uh, but it wasn't enough. And it would overheat right away. 
and wasn't giving me good readings. So you can kind of tell over, if you pay attention to your heat, um, your temperatures all the time, what I do, really helps to diagnose what's going on with your computer because um, if there's a change like that it slowly gets worse and worse and worse ended up coming to the conclusion that it was this thing again so now that that's done we'll put this back in here Put this sucker back on. Put some screws in just so I don't leak too much more out of here. While I'm trying to look up the, mm, the little electric motor in here. Just put two in for now. head in the way. Sorry about that. Okay. If you've ever had any freeze on your hands, it's kind of sticky. It's oily, but it's kind of tacky sticky. You can totally tell that there's something on your hands that's not natural. So, you know, another one, but I think this is a smaller. Oh, oh. Take this off. Good view there. And little screws. I don't want to have to disassemble this every single time. You know what I mean? But uh, putting the antifreeze in, I don't think it really made a big difference whatever was in there before was cloudy like it was white and cloudy um, I'll show you the pictures in the thing there so there's that so there's that plate and then there's another plate yeah so yeah let me get that out of there uh oh come on Every time I go to grab it, it drops. Anyways, I had to take this apart inside here because uh, one of the wires going to one of the coils was off. So I had to scrape the little wire off and solder on a little tiny wire from a stranded, I think it was a 28 gauge stranded wire I took one of the strands off and had to rewire it it was pretty tiny stuff but it ended up working so we'll have to test to see if the motor works after I'll take these guys out Here we go. What do we see? This feels pretty free there. And if we take this out, what do we see? All in all, it could have been the residue from before coming through because I do not see the cloudiness. I don't see anything else. So if you can see in there, 
not too bad. I'll get a little flashlight and just look down at it. Having the motor on here, I think, is very good. Uh, is a very good idea. Like, I don't see a whole lot of stuff in there anymore. But there is some caked in the corners here. I'll see if I can get scrape some out. If I can find my scraper. Where did I put it? There it is. Okay. I'll use this guy. I'll scrape some out of the corner. Yeah, as you can see the white stuff here. Put it on the so it looks like a bump. So this stuff is still in there. Um it's not from whatever I did, most likely, because it was doing it before, and this white stuff was all in there, so maybe it's all up in here. Um, it's definitely in the rad, so I think these rads just aren't um, made very well, or there was something in it. It's the only thing I can think of because the liquid as you saw was nice and green <laughs> um, there was no cloudiness to it um, there was a few chunks that came out but uh, when I took it out originally it was so cloudy you couldn't see through to the your hand below the bowl uh, that I had it and I had a glass bowl or a container that I put it in so there you have it. I think the antifreeze isn't going to do it. I'm not suggesting do that. Um, but it was worth looking at to see what actually it would do. Maybe it cleaned, maybe it made it acidic and cleaned out some of the chunks. Um, but usually you need a really high temp for antifreeze to become acidic, acidic and have it for a long time at high temp so and it's in a car so or an ATV so I mean usually it lasts quite a long time in a vehicle so there's just a little bit that I found some residue there's probably a few little pockets maybe in this these two reservoirs here well let's take off the plug because that will be interesting to see so I have a battery here but it's only testing to 10 volts so I plugged it in with these little guys so according to the schematics the striped one is ground and then power in and then power in so we'll just hook a positive up here hmm. well that's a win there you see that feels pretty strong too cool okay I'll run on 10 volts for sure, so I'll run on even faster on 12. <laughs> okay, so put 
put those guys away. My little bag of tricks over there. Battery can go back. Now that we know that this is good, we can put this back in. That just goes right there. Let's put this on. Actually, we'll need the battery again and those clips. So when I start pouring it in, I will try to run the pump so it will circulate the liquid in there. I'm just going to use distilled water uh, and see if that works. And then after another year, I'll take another look at this. I will just uh, cut it a little shorter. This was a um, whole process <laughs> from beginning to end sort of video. So just torque these just a little bit. I have some pretty high parts in there. I don't want it to break or leak, I should say. on there we see is the same screws for everything it's kind of nice usually you need a bit for every single screw well mechanics anyways that's kind of a pain goes from millimeter to inches imperial metric back and forth and you lose a 10 mil down the engine yeah it's all over but the crying okay let's clean this off this dust is kind of bugging me but i'll clean that all up after i hook this up and fill the port. I'll take this little thing out here. So if you can see this, this is a little plug. It just comes out like that and it reveals you know bigger. Let's see. Nope, one more, almost, not quite. There we go. Use that a security one, but I don't think it matters. So we'll take this out and inspect the end of this. See if there's any residue on the end of it. Looks pretty clean to me. Down the hole. Looks pretty good. I think there was just a little bit left in from the original liquid or whatever they put in here from the rad. Uh, I believe that putting the antifreeze in there kind of gave it a little lubricant in the system. But, uh, it's just in my opinion um, that the antifreeze didn't do any harm um, but and I want to emphasize that I'm just doing this as an experiment not to put antifreeze in your stuff just in case because if that ever leaks out it's really hard to get off your components so anyways I'm going to tilt this up And then hook the battery up and get a whole system up here. What I'm gonna do. So it should go in after I put screws in this. Let me put screw this up again. Tighten these screws down. Oh yeah, that's there we go. Yep, 
And as I said, it's been a, almost a year. I mean, it was October of last year. I posted that on Twitter. So. I can look at the timestamp on the pictures to find out exactly when, but let's just say for all intents and purposes almost a year. And uh, yeah, it wasn't as bad as I said. It was just the, I think the last little bit of residue. So the heat and the liquid moving uh, loosened it up and then uh oh, this one's gonna be a bugger. There we go. Crossroad, maybe. Let's try the crossroad stuff. Yeah. Okay, let's. Okay, all of them are in. Looks good. Okay, let's try to fill this. So I'll pause it, get my uh, liquid in a little container ready, and then I'll inject it into there. Okay, so I got a glass. I'm gonna be using this stuff. Uh, distilled water. It's leaking. Nice. Oh, I don't think I'll be using any more than this. Made sure to rinse out this cup and wash it and dry it really well. Make sure there's no impurities in it. There must be a hole in this bucket. Anyways. Okay, so we got the power here. Let's hook this back up to power. So back to this negative and positive. I'll double check that. No, I won't. I know that's what it was. <laughs> so hook the positive up first. Turn it around like this. Like that. Perfect. Here it go right away. I got my syringe. Make sure there's no contaminants on this either. start filling this will take a while but it's a very small hole I could have uh, filled it up faster if I used the hole where the motor is but then I would have to move it around to actually put the water in it
that's got no more bubbles coming out of that. So if you can hear that. It is running. Doesn't sound bad. So we'll just unhook this guy. And I guess the only thing to do now is to install it in my computer and see if there's any changes. But it seems like it's pushing the, the water fairly quick through the cooler so hopefully this will cool a lot better. We'll take a measurement uh, in the center bench again. See, see where we're at. We'll uh, put this back down again. Okay, so just for information, this is how I have it hooked up. So the clip on the outside, this is ground and this is positive. Uh, the stripe one, I believe they show it as a negative so that's what I use to pump it go from there I'll cut to it in the PC because it's just the reverse of what I did now I'll be cleaning it uh, vacuuming it out so I'll spare you the noise Okay, I got it all back together again. I have a few pictures of my nice cable management, stuff like that. Uh, I will be putting that in the video uh, in this intermission, I guess. Uh, got all the cable routed and everything. Haven't turned it on yet. I'll flip the power switch in the back and then we'll turn it on and see what we got here. Power switch starts up. Okay, got the RGB puke. camera is about to die so we'll see if we can't get a few more seconds in here okay let everything load a little bit connected to the internet through my VPN. There it goes. Might as well get this going. Ground control started. Okay, I'm running about 51.43.29 on the hotspot. Okay, so I lost uh, battery power in my DSL, so we'll have to use this for now. I wanted to show you right away as soon as the computer starts, so um, I'll talk you through it. Okay, sitting at idle, we're sitting at 36 on the T-Die. 27 on the CCD1 and the hotspot is 29.5. So we'll start Cinebench here. It's 
start. And we'll do the multi-core again. Okay, as soon as I hit the button, I'm gonna go through the attempts with you. Make sure another one's not starting. Okay, here's uh, NVIDIA putting their two cents in here. <laughs> Well, at least I can screenshot this or uh, stream this, record this view, which is nice. Okay, so we'll start this. It's getting ready to go. We're at 49, 60, 75 on the other key die, 72, 74, 75, 75, 75. 76, 74, 76, 76 still, I went up to 77 for a second, 77, 76, 75, 77.3 is the highest I've seen CPU hotspot saying that it's 35, so it's pretty good. So we're at 14096 is the score. Um, we got up to 77.3, so that's almost a 10 degree difference from when we started, and it didn't jump up right away like it did in the other one. Uh, when I hit the start, it would jumped right to 80 to 82.5 degrees, like right away. I can't remember exactly what we got up to, so I would say about five to eight degree difference. Um, we'll try it one more time. See, now it's idling at 30, 30 degrees. 38 on the top one, 40. So we'll try it one more time see what happens. So we're at 46, 54, 74.3, 76, 75, 75, 76, 77, 75, 76. So it's staying pretty cool right now. Hasn't hit 70, uh, here, hit 77 just now. 77.3, 77.8 is the highest I've seen. Oh, 78, 78.5. And, it ha and that's the highest, it went back down to 77.3. So we ended up going up. <laughs> Uh, 14465 is the score so that's that's cool um, so all in all I think it's working fine for now if you like this uh, please subscribe and uh, give me a like and uh, I hope to be putting some more videos in I got uh, an iPhone 4 that I changed a power button switch on. Actually, resoldered a, a little tiny switch on. Um, and I got a DVD player that I'm working on right now. Um, other than that, if you want to see something else uh, with this, I can put it in. If you want me to test this get Game Max L360 V2, I'm thinking that's version 2 by Deepcool, let me know in the comments if uh, there's something that I missed or if you have a, a theory on what's going on there. Please comment below. I, I don't know exactly what's going on with it, but I just know that it looks like oxidization to me and with that uh, antifreeze in there I think it just uh, coated everything so that um, 
just the loose stuff went into the fins so other than that it wasn't cloudy so and it was cloudy before so I don't know what liquid they used before uh, if you know that let me know in the comments um, and uh, we'll go from there I'll see you on the next one thanks for watching